Uh, we will now continue with the second question and answer session, and our uh, question is faxed in from Peru, so I will read that for you. <coughs> Culture determines quite often the type and style of group and social response to crisis and disasters. Are, these, are there any studies along these lines? Yeah, there are actually many studies uh, of this phenomenon. Uh, one of the major uh, differences between cultures are individualistic cultures, uh, such as America and Northern, uh, the United States of America and Northern Europe, and collectivistic cultures, which include many South American countries and many Asian countries. Collectivistic cultures usually are more likely to respond as a group where in individualistic countries, it's much more likely that the expectation is that the individual uh, or the individual's family is going to solve the problem. Having said that, however, there is uh, a lot of research which suggests that in a disaster, uh, people very frequently come to one another's aid. And governments and businesses need to trust the people to do the right thing in a, in a crisis because they usually do. Great. And our second question uh, also is faxed in from our own global San Diego Global University. Uh, different media compete with each other for first access to latest news events, including those around crisis and disasters. Yeah. Should there be a different code of behavior in these cases so that they cooperate rather than compete for the benefit of the community? Well, this is a very big and a very complex question. And the first thing uh, we should know is that uh, uh, different people use m different media in different ways. Older people are much more likely to rely on the older media, like radio and television and newspapers. Younger people are much more likely uh, to use chat rooms and email and instant messenger. So there is a, there's a generation gap in how media are used. Now, when the media rush to cover uh, a crisis, uh, there is another tension that occurs. On the one hand, media should be able to report the truth about any event as it's going on. However, there's also need for a disaster management agency to put out a single message which says this is what you should do, evacuate, shelter in place, take antibiotics, don't go to work because avian flu has struck, or whatever. And it's very important that that message from the disaster agency is consistent and that the media all broadcast that message. That's right. Great. Thank you. Our next question is from Puebla, Mexico. Go ahead, please. Do we have a question from Puebla? Okay, we're, we're going to go. Okay, that's faxed in. All right, that's done our, our number three faxed in question. Okay, here we go. How can we develop a stronger personal and professional collaboration and networking mental, mentality in our society today to cope with risk and security? Yeah, well, uh, it, it's very important that collaboration occur both formally, and that's at the government uh, or at the corporate level, and that it uh, happen informally uh, in uh, friendship networks, neighborhoods, and families. Uh, one of the most important thing individuals can do is have discussions about what happens in the case of fire or earthquake or flood or hurricane. Uh, many people don't have an adequate food supply on hand. They don't have an emergency uh, preparedness kit. They don't have first aid supplies. So those are very minimal things that families and small businesses and other institutions can do uh, that are very effective in uh, uh, coping with a disaster. Right. Okay, now we go to Puebla uh, for our next question that is called in. Go ahead, please. We know that currently cell phones can have a certain uh, satellite tracing system for people that are in trouble. My question is, how um, costly or how efficient are these systems, and do you recommend them or don't you? Thank you. Yeah, well, <clears throat> um, 
most cell phones today have uh, the ability uh, to do global positioning. In fact, that's how uh, you locate your uh, local cell site, and that's how you complete your call. So in a disaster situation, let's see, so, say somebody uh, is uh, lost uh, while hiking or uh, buried in rubble, but they don't know where that person is. Uh, it is relatively easy for that phone company to trace you. That is the bright side of global positioning systems. Uh, the dark side of it is that uh, government agencies, uh, uh, including evil governments, that have access to those records know where you are at any moment. It's very interesting. If you ever look at your cellular telephone bill, if you're making phone calls for driving, your entire pattern can be traced by the names of the towns you're driving through as you're making cell phone calls. Mm -hmm. So this gives an opportunity for Big Brother to watch you, but it also uh, enables disaster uh, agencies to locate people uh, that need to be located and rescued. Great, thank you. Uh, next question is coming from Zacatecas, Mexico. Go ahead, please. Considering the political, economic, and social implications with um, oil prices going up, could we see in the next 20 years in our, can we see that, that we're going to have a, a total drop in our oil reserves? And in terms of education institutions, um, what can we do in terms of of training our students, um, our student body, to see how we can uh, cope with such a situation? Yeah, that's a great question and one that's very pertinent today with the global price of oil rising almost daily. Uh, there's a couple of things we need to do in terms of educating the next generation. The first thing is much more uh, aggressively exploit alternative energy sources. That's uh, hydrogen cars, hybrid cars, electric cars. The world's supply of oil is finite. Now, people can debate whether that we got 40 years or 50 years or 100 years, but clearly we're going to run out of oil, and in the short term, the price is going to be driven up. What we also have to consider is that uh, we have to do more conservation, and technology can help us with conservation because like this show in which folks at hundreds of universities did not all have to come to San Diego in order to participate, uh, technology enables us to distribute messages. Uh, teleconferences, video conferences can often substitute for real meeting, meetings, uh, which diminishes the necessity uh, for traveling across great distances and burning all that fuel. Likewise, e-commerce with uh, people shopping online and having their products delivered uh, diminishes trips to the mall and burns less total amount of fuel, saving money and conserving scarce resources. Excellent. Uh, next question is from Lima, Peru. Go ahead, please. Good morning. We're calling from Lima, Peru, from the University of Ricardo Palma. And we would like to congratulate um, the ITC for its uh, 150th video conference. And we would like to congratulate all of the ITC team. Our question is, how detrimental could the Internet be in with our children? Uh, what risks are they facing, and how can we manage um, the information that this future generation is accessing? Well, <clears throat> the Internet, like most media, is a two-edged sword. On the one hand, there are risks, but the benefits probably way out uh, weigh the risks. Uh, clearly, uh, putting in certain kinds of software can screen out the most undesirable uh, kinds of contacts that can be made on the Internet and uh, prevent access of websites that are violent or uh, explicitly sexual in nature that probably are, are wise to screen from children. We have a, a short time uh, for a question uh, that is faxed in uh, from uh, New Delhi, India. The concept of sharing knowledge across the globe promoted by ITC is a very powerful one. How can we better communicate and promote this message through mass media? Well, uh, certainly the ITC is a great example of that. Uh, this broadcast uh, 
knows no borders, no linguistic boundaries, uh, and, and uh, as, as the internet and global telecommunication become more prevalent, this type of thing is going to become increasingly possible, and we're very happy to have uh, played a small part uh, in the global network of communication that's rapidly taking place. All right, uh, our uh, last question, Santa Domingo, go ahead, please. This is um, a comment and an invitation, 150 programs, and this is really a unique experience in Latin America. This is united institutions, peoples, and we have shared knowledge, culture, and especially we have shared a common vision of a better future that we as a whole share. I would like to congratulate Miguel Angel and Maria Luisa and the whole team of the ITC to become a bridge and to really put us on equal footing. And I would like to say God bless you and and to continue to be a bridge to be able to link the past, the present, and the future full of dreams and hope. Thank you. Uh, muchas gracias y buena suerte. Thank you for your comment. Uh, thank you for your excellent questions. But we have run out of time. We hope that uh, you have enjoyed participating once again in this exciting multilingual and multinational program. I invite you to visit the ITC Online video library at www.itc-gnet.org to make use of our rich catalog of webcasts, particularly those related to our annual series theme, Service, Excellence, and Productivity for Global Success. Our next live video conference, airing July 6, 2006, will be titled Strategies for Global Competitiveness, Methods, and Innovation Management of Human Resources. For additional information on this video conference series, please consult your participants' manual where you can find specific information and topic for each program or visit the ITC website where you can also obtain information on or purchase ITC's valuable new communication and collaboration resource, the ITC iPhone, an easy-to-use internet-based phone that will help all of us connect more effectively across borders. For more details, please contact ITC. We also invite you to learn more about our online academic and certification entity, San Diego Global University, and enroll in its unique Master of Science degrees and Global Competency Diploma programs, fully available online in both English and Spanish. On behalf of all of us, I thank you for your ongoing participation and interest in this unique program. Thank you and see you soon.